Peer effects is an important term in behavior psychology which indicates that a person will learn new skills from his peers in a group. For example, in a high school or a college, if a student is surrounded by some serious high-ability students who are focusing on their academic performance, he will be more likely to take his studies seriously as well. This means the low-ability students can get benefits for his academic scores if he is studying with a group of high- or middle-ability students. Let's assume that you are the principal of a school and your goal is to enhance the academic performance of each student. How to divide your students into groups might be a real question. You may think random division might be a good idea. This video will discuss this topic based on the results from a famous experiment. In 2007, three economists, Scott Carroll, Bruce Sacerdot, and James West, conducted an experiment with some new students at the United States Air Force Academy, a military college in which all the students are divided into several squadrons and each squadron has about 120 students. Students in the same squadron will live, study, and take training together, which will enable all students in a squadron to become close peers. By investigating the final score of those students, the testers do have the following conclusion. High-ability students themselves are usually not easily influenced by others, but they can significantly improve the academic scores of those low-ability students. Also, low-ability students will have a negative impact on those middle-ability students in academic performance. Considering the fact that low ability will have a negative influence on those middle ability students, the testers decide to modify the original division plan like this. The high ability and low ability students are grouped into the same squadron, and the middle ability students are grouped to a separate squadron. In this way, the testers believe that the high ability students will not be affected, the low ability students will benefit from an increased number of high ability students as their peers, and the middle ability students will also get benefits from being isolated from the low ability students. Compared with the original plan in which all students are allocated randomly, the testers believe that nobody's performance will get negatively affected in this plan. The high ability and middle ability may get a little improvement, and the low ability students will greatly improve their academic scores. The testers used this plan next year to see if there are some improvements from the original one. Surprisingly, the testers didn't get their expected results. The actual results they did get is, for those low-ability students who were deliberately allocated to the same squadron with the high-ability students, their academic scores did not rise as expected, but dropped significantly. In comparison, the scores of those middle-ability students who were allocated separately into another squadron increased significantly. Why do we get this seemingly incomprehensible result? We usually have an assumption that as long as the students are allocated to the same squadron, they will naturally become close peers, and then positive or negative interactions will happen with each other. However, in our daily life, many interactions between peers, especially the transfer of knowledge and learning skills, are based on mutual communication. Generally, sitting in the same classroom with a high-ability student does not naturally make you a high-ability student. You need to communicate with each other to learn new skills. In the case of random allocation, the number of low-ability students and high-ability students in a squadron is randomly distributed. The existence of those middle-ability students will work as the medium to connect the other two categories. A high-ability student may make friends with a middle-ability student or a low-ability student. However, in the second plan, the absence of the middle-ability students will end up with a bigger gap between the low-ability students and high-ability students. This will result in the fact that high-ability students only make friends with high-ability students, and low-ability students only make friends with low-ability students. Since those low-ability students cannot get too much help from the high-ability students, their academic performance will drop significantly, although they are in the same squadron as those high-ability students. In summary, the implementation of peer effects might be more complicated than we previously thought. The mutual connections with other members is an important factor needing to be considered before making any decisions. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button or subscribe button for more interesting topics.